it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one to to really navigate through. I mean, we're we're not we're, we're not as rational as we think we are, but we are rationalizing. We like to rationalize our actions. <laughs> well, well put. Um, one more thought on just to play on what you just said on Sabu, and I, I want to move on. I'm realizing we don't actually have a lot of time. Um, the um, you're right. I do think his again, just observing this, he did, did seem like his uh, rhetoric amped up when he came back. He he left for a period of about a month. Uh, his Twitter, which is usually you know 20 tweets a day, um, uh, it, it was uh, it just went dark for a month and a half. And when he came back, it did seem amped up. And um, you do have a very strange situation where you have somebody who's instigating illegal activity uh, and working for the FBI. So I, I think there are issues of entrapment for those people that are um, that are uh, uh, that are have been arrested last week in in connection with some of these stuff, anti-sec members and other people that were working with Sabu. Um, not being a lawyer my, myself, I, I only know a couple things about this. I think you have they have to prove inducement that he induced them for illegal acts. That seems pretty clear to me that yep. he was doing that. Um, but they also have to prove uh, predisposition, which, is, which means that the person committing that act uh, was not already predisposed to do it. In some cases, that might be more difficult. Uh, the, the, issue we have, the issue we have there is that I watched, and some of these people that did get arrested would not have done the hacks that they did for the simple reason that half of the ones arrested, he taught how to do them after he was already an FBI informant, then showed them targets that were available, and then they went and used what he taught them on the target that he pointed out under FBI, you know, uh, watch. And right. entrapment is one of the hardest things to prove. For every thousand cases that go, you know, before with the defense of entrapment, one is successful. I mean, it's, it's a very hard one to prove, even with evidence. So who knows how far that argument goes. Some lawyers won't even bring it because they know how hard it is to prove. But uh, most of these cases are, are interesting in that respect. The, the issue of Sabu brings up this kind of one of the uh, w sort of weaknesses of Anon, which is that anybody can do it, and it's, and it's prone to, to, uh, to agent provocateurs like him. Yeah, any, any, any one person can co-opt Anonymous and do something that will get press attention and just completely derail uh, a year's worth of um, you know, good hard work that Anonymous has done to fight censorship and corruption. Yeah. And you tweeted about this yesterday. Um, you denounced what happened yesterday, which almost seems to fall in the same category, which is um, somebody claiming to be anonymous. Um, they took down the British equivalent of Planned Parenthood. Um, they, you know, they, they defaced, the, they defaced the site, stole some, some information, I think, of, of women that were um, inquiring about information, nothing, uh, nothing inquiring about it. Uh, so, which is a, a, a really ugly situation. And I, I know you came out yesterday and just said, this is ridiculous. Um, and, but, but people can do that. People can co-opt it for a day and make it and sort of right. pull I mean, those and that's kind of stuff. Right, that's sort of anonymous, right? You know, it can do good, but it can also do bad. And if any, any, anybody can claim to be anonymous and do anything they want um, for political reasons, however crazy they may be, and, and cite them to anonymous, and then um, easily, um, you know, like you said, that could be false flag option, you know, operation where, where someone wants to make anonymous look bad, so they do something like this. Yeah. It's easy to do. Anyone can do it. How did you get involved in anonymous and what has your, you know, the, the, the issue of anonymous, I get asked this all the time, what, what was their role in Occupy? And I always think that it's a really kind of fascinating role, almost like a, a tech support kind of assistant, a kind of um, certainly megaphone. Uh, maybe you can speak to that a little bit. It, it's a little bit like living in a science fiction novel right now that we have, you know, occupiers, it almost feels sometimes like we have this, this hacker army that, that is sort of our tech support. That's a great way to put it. Um, and I, I've, I've only in the last four months been interacting directly with Anonymous, but I've watched them for a long time. I was involved in the tech industry. Um, and it was really fascinating to me to see sort of this undirected nerd rage that would sort of be like, let's go attack this message board, let's go attack this website, suddenly sort of through Scientology and then Occupy become this, this directed force, at least partially, although we were just talking, of course, how sort of everyone's anonymous. Um, I, I, when I got involved with Occupy uh, is when I started directly interacting with them, uh, mostly via Twitter, uh, and I, I've made a number of anonymous contacts. My most uh, dramatic interaction with Anonymous, I think, 
uh, came at the beginning of February. Uh, we'd had a full day of action at Occupy Austin, a day against actually the NDAA, which is a big target of Anonymous. And we had a march, we had several marches, a big action, we all went home, and then we all got the phone call that we were about to be evicted from City Hall. And for those that don't know, uh, we held City Hall for almost four months, the steps, uh, continuously as occupiers. They gave us about half an hour's warning that we were going to be evicted. So of course we all bundle down there as fast as we can, and uh, we, we decide what we were going to do is something called the Portland Lap, which is an Occupy uh, tactic that was started in Portland, obviously, where when the police come to kick you out, uh, instead of staying and getting arrested, you literally pick up your tents and start marching through the streets with them. And so we did that. We waited until the last moment. There were several arrests on the City Hall Plaza, but the bulk of us left and entered the streets. And we were marching through 6th Street and down here by the convention center, uh, over, I think, on the Red River side or by the 35 frontage road. And we were suddenly uh, ambushed by police while we were on the sidewalk. And one of our members who was being charged, um, they were basically framing him because he was wearing uh, a bandana on his face. Uh, they, they grabbed him, threw him down on the sidewalk, and were very roughly arresting him. And we surrounded and began chanting, shame, shame, as we often do, uh, to the police, who do you protect? Uh, at that point, uh, an officer jumped out and threatened us with a pepper spray can. Uh, he was maybe as close as you, maybe as Greg's distance, but he had his arm out, you know, so it was right up in our face. And he said, you know, I'm going to pepper spray all of you if you don't stop. And, you know, we, we saw his name. He hadn't covered his badge name, number. And after they finished the arrest and backed off, I stepped forward out of the crowd, and I knew we had live streamers uh, with us who had a lot of viewers. And I said, Officer Jason Mistrick, and I read his badge number. I said, we have your name and number. It's on the internet. And Anonymous is going to dox you within hours. All your personal details will be everywhere within hours. <laughs> and they were. Yep. Um, and I mean, I felt like a superhero. Right. It was probably my greatest moment as an occupier. Um, that I could, I could step forward and that someone who had threatened us unreasonably, we were not being violent. We were not trying even to unarrest, as sometimes does happen. Um, we were just watching and calling them out on their behavior of arresting someone on a sidewalk. Um, and I was able to call on Anonymous and know that they would deliver. And it was a really powerful moment. Uh, and I think also for uh, the occupation, um, it helped us know that we had this backup, that we had Anonymous who had our back, who is watching us, who are legion. Uh, and all of us are Anonymous. Um, and within hours, we not only had his personal details, but we had information about some of his other crimes. Jason Mistrick has a history of harassing critical mass cyclists here and other poor behavior. Um, and so we knew about all of that. We are able to call him on it. Now we show up at uh, city hall meetings where he sometimes is security and talk to him or have signs of him holding the pepper spray can to our faces. Yeah, um, yeah it's, great. it's a great story. And that's the kind of story you, hear, you heard a lot at Occupy. Um, there's the famous uh, Tony Baloney incident in, um, in New York where uh, the, the woman, I'm, we've seen this, these images of her um, being behind the stanchions just being uh, hammered with uh, pepper spray. And, um, and Anonymous finding, you know, finding out who that was, and, and, and I think he was fired, if I'm not mistaken. He was on suspension, as I understood it. Having followed Anonymous since, since uh, Scientology, I was, uh, you know, a lot of people had joined the movement, like around Occupy, even. And I asked somebody about, about Scientology, and they said, that, and they weren't aware that that's where Anonymous had gotten its roots, um, with, with a mask and everything. It's a lot of that. So, how important was, I think this is a seminal moment for, for the development of, of Anonymous. Um, put that into words. How important is Chenology to the, the kind of history of it? I think the importance of Chenology was really that the internet hadn't been used in that way. You know, just to say it, when we posted the message to Scientology video, uh, we didn't expect more than 100 people to show up on IRC. You know, we, we thought a troll would happen for a couple days. Can I interrupt you for a second? What was the instigating? Tell me the in, what initially angered well, the, the instigation was the Tom Cruise video. Uh, there was a hilarious Tom Cruise video, short clip, and it was under the time limit, so it was fair use to be posted. So um, Scientology went up and started removing it from the websites that it got posted on by filing lawsuits, uh, threatening lawyers, filing DMCA claims. And that's censorship. And, you know, if any of you come see uh, the documentary later, you hear people uh, go on a little longer about, you know, that reasoning. But uh, the basics were, here you are on our turf censoring things that you don't have any legal right to censor. Well, that pissed us all off. 
So we decided to go repost the video everywhere that we possibly could. That made them more angry, and we just went back and forth a little. And um, we decided that it would be funny to actually, you know, put out this ominous video that said that, you know, the internet was coming and we were going to destroy you. And uh, it, it was a troll. It was, you know, it, we thought it would last a couple weeks. And what did we know? Because I go to bed that night after it gets uploaded and I get woken up in the morning um, by my girlfriend yelling and screaming that the servers are all down. We, we had accidentally DDoSed ourselves. Uh, so many people had come to the chat servers that the chat servers weren't staying up. Uh, there were about 10,000 people actually attempting to connect and chat in one channel on IRC. And if any of you ever used IRC, you know, even over 100 people trying to talk and it's scrolling by so fast that you can't even see what you said. So we had to get in there and try and figure out how do you organize this many people worldwide? How do you get them to kind of segregate themselves into smaller chat groups and all these other things that happened over those next few days. And really it was kind of the culmination of all of that and what we figured out over those days that led to only you know, two weeks later, 10,000 people in the streets in 143 cities in 42 countries. There was no money, there was no central website, there was no company behind this organization, it just happened. You know, every step of the way, I, I can recount every day as we planned this out, it was an accident. And then we followed it up by luckily getting it right. Um, looking back, you know, during it, we had no idea if we were getting it right. But uh, it was the real first time that Anonymous showed its face out in the world in a big way that everyone got to see. Or that the internet had called people <laughs> in that mass forward for a protest like that. Yeah, it was really the first time that also, I mean, a, a, a protest like that had come out of the internet and, and really gone to the streets. Also, for the development, as you know, the film, we're looking at the kind of history of these things. That, that seems uh, one of the amazing kind of moments in the film is, the, is when people talk about what it was like to actually see each other in real life for the first time. That this was, it was in a sense... Meeting your friends that you had never met and gotten to talk to was, was very interesting. Yeah. People who all were just that little anonymous name on these websites uh, that now, you know... Might not have faces because most of them are masked, but you at least get to stand there and talk to them. It, it was interesting, you know, meeting so many people that had the same sense of humor as you, uh, you know, somewhat dark, uh, you know, and uh, who had seen all the things on 4chan that can never be unseen. <laughs> and, you know, you know, you, you got to come, sit there. Come and, to the and, film, you'll see a few. Yeah, you get, you get to sit there and talk with these people and get along with them. And, you know, you included my favorite part in the film, so. <laughs> yeah, which is. Oh. Yeah, you know, I, uh, one of the things that, uh, that, that he actually included in the film that I didn't know was on the record when we were talking about it, but I didn't care that it went in, uh, was, you know, one of the interesting things that happened at those original Chenology uh, protests was all these, you know, guys, you know, especially the younger guys, who were masked up and might have been a little socially awkward, might have been the guys who really spent most of their time on the internet, um, came out, and they were able to talk and, you know, be interactive with all these people in public because their faces were covered. They were willing to, you know, be a lot more forward. And it turned out that there were a lot of uh, good-looking women, too. It was surprising that the split was actually, like, in half. I mean, in Boston, we had 280 people. Big misconceptions, right? Big we, misconceptions about anonymous. Yeah. That it's all sort of 12-year-old yeah. boys. We had 280 in fact, people in Boston, and it was yeah. easily 150 of them were women. And so they all got to talking behind the masks, and they were much more open and free with each other. And, you know, six months in, there were two weddings at protests from people who had met at the first one. And... Thousands of you know these virgin geeks had been laid. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I thought that was one of the best parts of the protest. It's a great moment. Yeah, it's a great moment in Anon history. Yeah, um, uh, Anon nine thousand. I want to get to you and and Sopa. This is an, this is a big part of what Anonymous has done uh, this year, um, and you feel very strongly about this. Um, can you um, well put put it in, into context for us? You know, this is South by Southwest, so I assume that, that most of you, or at least some of you, are somewhat familiar with SOPA uh, and, and the fact that it was uh, a bill uh, put forward by Lamar Smith uh, in Texas. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it's basically, you know, internet censorship. And, um, you know, we have, we have Anonymous to thank, we have Google and Wikipedia and a ton of other websites to thank, uh, Reddit included, uh, to thank for... Um, you know, helping us carry uh, carry this information forward, and and I think uh, 2012 and forward, um, we're going to see the importance of uh, public awareness, uh, and, um, and 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 we're going to highlight that this is an info war, and that we we have to fight against our own uh, our own government to to, to show people uh, what the truth is about um, 